Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me for this OpenCon 2021 Lightning Talk entitled Digital Legal Research, Accessible and Powerful. My name is Lewis Myers, and I currently work as the Librarian in Residence for the Public Services Division of the Law Library of Congress. Before we begin, please be advised that although I am an employee of the Law Library of Congress, I am here in my own personal capacity. The contents of this presentation are representative of my own thoughts and opinions and should not be considered as official statements, opinions, or conclusions of the Library of Congress. However, I will also highlight some Library of Congress resources at the end, and I do hope you will visit our website to explore what we have to offer online. The most common resources for legal research come in the form of subscription databases. Unfortunately, access to these databases is quite expensive and unrealistic for many. Public law libraries frequently have patron access to these services. However, during the last year, access to public libraries of all types has been severely limited. Law libraries and their access to legal resources are an important tool for those who are unable to hire an attorney and for those who are interested in research for other reasons. As a librarian, it's important to mention to the researcher that the instruction and strategy being provided are not to be considered legal advice of any sort. It is good practice to provide a disclaimer before moving forward into instructing a researcher on any of these resources. Luckily, there are different legal resources available online that provide open access to all users, assuming an interconnect connection, of course, that can help serve users who do not have access to the suite of expensive subscription databases. Furthermore, users can access these resources anywhere, so the current closure of public libraries is not a concern for researchers using these free resources. Now, each researcher is going to have unique needs and will require a unique research strategy. However, we can look at different categories of researchers more broadly to introduce some of the different resources. For the purposes of this talk, we are going to go through resources that may be helpful to an unrepresented litigant, sometimes called a pro se litigant. And of course, these resources can also be very helpful to students doing academic research and to other users interested in a variety of subjects and disciplines. So there are several general resources that are going to be helpful for this category of researcher. First, you are going to want to check with the state or county court system and look for the resources that they provide. Generally, they are going to be referred to as pro se resources or self-help resources. For example, if we look up the Cuyahoga County Clerk of Courts, we can find information um, for different types of legal cases, including forms and instructions. And you can always refer to these websites um, so that researchers can determine their own best next course of action. Um, you can also provide the researcher with information about federal, state, and local law. Um, frequently, not always, matters that pro se litigants will be researching are going to appear under state or local law. But federal law is easy to find and it's available in many formats. Um, one very helpful resource is the Office of the Law Revision Council. And this is a version of the code that is compiled by the U.S. House of Representatives. So from their website, we can see that they have many different search options, as well as options to search for historic laws over in this left hand navigation bar. So state law is generally pretty easy to locate as well. Um, most of the time, state statutes and regulations can generally be located um, right from the state legislature's website. So for Ohio, we can pull up the Ohio Revised Code right from the Ohio Legislative Services Commission. Um, this compilation is searchable, so a researcher can identify which law applies to his case. So from their web page, we can um, access the Ohio Revised Code right here, and we can also access the Ohio Administrative Code. 
So with that, um, we can also look at local law. Finding local law can be trickier. Frequently, local laws are hosted um, through commercial third party sources. Um, a big one is going to be Municode, and they have Akron, Cincinnati, and Columbus, um, but there's other publishers out there. One strategy to locate the local laws is just to go to the city council website or you know the town website, whatever it is, and um, you can generally um, find it right from their website. So for example, if we want to um, look up Cleveland, we'll go to the Cleveland City Council website and we can see here that they actually use a publisher called the American Legal Publishing Corporation. But if we want, we can just click on the link directly and we can see an online version of the current charter and the different local ordinances. So researchers may wish to access case law as well. And a really helpful free resource is actually through Google. It's Google Scholar. And Google Scholar allows you to research case law using a variety of different jurisdictional filters to identify judis judicial decisions that could affect an individual's own case. So see here, um, if you go over to Google Scholar, we have our case law function and we can see that we can um, pare things down to federal courts or Ohio courts. And then we can also um, select different courts if we don't wanna be working out of Ohio. And just as a final thought, I would invite you all to visit the Law Library of Congress's website and that's at law.gov. And we have created research guides that cover many popular legal research topics um, with many designed for beginner researchers. Our guides cover general topics and also provide resources for all 50 states and the US territories. And along with our guides, we have webinars available, um, both live and recorded, that go over some of the general strategies for using a lot of um, the different resources, including some of the resources that I talked about today in this presentation. Um, and so there's our main page and you can um, access all our resources right from there. So I hope everyone can join me for the panel discussion tomorrow at 2 p.m. And for tomorrow's panel, I would invite everyone to think about the following discussion questions. How do you think these legal research resources could be utilized for disenfranchised or vulnerable populations? What benefits would your entire spectrum of users find from these resources? And second question, in the current environment where there has been a noticeable interest in various aspects of our legal system, do you anticipate providing any of these resources to users and how would you present these resources to users without crossing that threshold of providing them with legal advice? I hope you guys can all think of creative uses for all of the strategies and resources I just went over. And I look forward to answering any questions you may have and um, discussing any comments or other thoughts that you might have about what we talked about today. So thank you so much for listening and I will see you tomorrow at two o'clock.